which is the more complex game, chess or poker, or go or poker? Do you that know? Is, that is a controversial question. Okay. Um, I'm gonna- oh, It's like somebody screaming on Reddit right now. It depends on which subreddit you're on. Is yeah, it chess or is yeah. it poker? I'm sure like David Silver is gonna get really angry at me. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say, I'm gonna say poker actually, and I think for a couple reasons. Um, They're not here to defend themselves. <laughs> so first of all, you have the imperfect information aspect. And so it's, um, it, we, we can go into that, but like once you introduce imperfect information, uh, things get much more complicated. So we should say, maybe you can describe what is seen to the players, what is not seen uh, in the game of Texas Hold'em. Yeah, so Texas Hold'em, you get two cards face down that only you see. Um, and so that's the hidden information of the game. The other players also all get two cards face down that only they see. Um, and so you have to kind of, as you're playing, reason about like, okay, what do they think I have? What do they have? What do they think I think they have? That kind of stuff. And um, that's that's kind of where bluffing comes into play, right? Because the fact that you can bluff, the fact that you can bet with a bad hand and still win is because they don't know what your cards are. All right. And that's the that's the key difference between a perfect information game like poker, uh, sorry, like chess and go, um, and imperfect information games like poker. This is what trash talk looks like. <laughs> the implied statement is the game I solved is much tougher. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, when you're playing, I'm just going to do random questions here. So what, when you're playing your opponent under imperfect information. Is there some degree to which you're trying to estimate the range of hands that they have? Or is that not part of the algorithm? So how, uh, what are the different approaches to the imperfect information game? So the key thing to understand about why imperfect information makes things difficult mm -hmm. is that you have to worry not just about which actions to play, but the probability that you're going to play those actions. So you think about um, rock, paper, scissors, for example. Rock, paper, scissors is an imperfect information game. Um, right. because you don't know what I'm about to throw. I, I do, but yeah, usually not. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can't just say like, oh, I'm just going to throw a rock every single time mm -hmm. because the other person's going to figure that out and notice a pattern. And then suddenly you're going to start losing. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just have to figure out like which action to play. You have to figure out the probability that you play it. And really importantly, the value of an action depends on the probability that you're going to play it. So if you're playing rock every single time, that value is really low. But if you're never playing rock, you play rock like 1% of the time, then suddenly the, the other person's probably gonna be throwing scissors. And when you throw rock, the value of that action is gonna be really high. Now you take that to poker, what that means is the value of bluffing, for example, if you're the kind of person that never bluffs and you have this reputation as somebody that, that never bluffs and suddenly you bluff, there's a really good chance that that bluff is gonna work and you're gonna make a lot of money. On the other hand, if you got a reputation, like if they've seen you play for a long time and they see, oh, you're the kind of person that's bluffing all the time, when you bluff, they're not going to buy it and they're going to call you down. You're going to lose a lot of money. And that finding that balance of how often you should be bluffing is uh, the key challenge of a game of poker. And um, you contrast that with a game like chess. It doesn't matter if you're opening with the queen's gambit 10% of the time or 100% of the time. The value, the expected value is the same. So um, so that's that's why we need these algorithms that understand not just we have to figure out what actions are good, but the probabilities. We need to get the exact probabilities correct. And that's actually when we created the bot Libratus, Libratus means balanced because the algorithm that we designed was designed to find that right balance of how often it should play each action. The balance of how often in the key sort of branching is to bluff or not to bluff. Is that, is, that a, is that a good crude simplification of the major decision in poker? It's a good simplification. I think that's like the main tension, but it's it's not just how often to bluff or not to bluff. It's like, how often should you bet in general? How often should you, what what kind of bet should you make? Um, should you bet big or should you bet small? And with which, with, with which hands? Uh, and so this is where the idea of a, of a range comes from. Yeah. Because when you're bluffing with a particular hand in a particular spot, you don't want there to be a pattern for the other person to pick up on. You don't want them to figure out, oh, whenever this person is in this spot, they're always bluffing. And so you have to reason about, okay, would I also bet with a good hand in this spot? You want to be unpredictable. So you have to think about, 
what would I do if I had this different set of cards? Is there explicit estimation of like a theory of mind that the other person has about you? Or is that just a emergent thing that happens? The way that the bots handle it the, that are really successful, they have an explicit theory of mind. So they're explicitly reasoning about what are, what's the common knowledge belief? What does what do you think I have? What do I think you have? What do you think I think you have? Um, it's explicitly reasoning about that. Is there multiple U's there? So maybe that's jumping ahead to six players, but I, is there a stickiness to the person? To, so it's an iterative game. You're playing the same person. There is a, there's a stickiness to that, right? You're gathering information as you play. It's not every, every, um, every hand is a new hand. Is there... Um, a continuation in terms of estimating what kind of player I'm facing here? That's a good question. So you could approach the game that way. The way that the bots do it, they don't, and the way that humans approach it also, expert human players, the way they approach it is to basically assume that you know my strategy. So I'm going to try to pick a strategy where even if I were to play it for 10,000 hands and you could figure out exactly what it was, you still wouldn't be able to beat it. Basically what that means is I'm trying to approximate the Nash equilibrium. I'm trying to be perfectly balanced because if if I'm playing the Nash equilibrium, even if you know what my strategy is, like I said, I'm still unbeatable in expectation. So so that's what that's what the bot aims for. And that's actually what a lot of expert poker players aim for as well, to start by playing the Nash equilibrium. And then maybe if they spot weaknesses in the way you're playing, then they can deviate a little bit to take advantage of that. 